Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so awesome. We exalt your name and we give you all the glory and all the praise. May you continue to show us great and mighty things that we do not know and instruct us in the path of life that leads into your everlasting kingdom. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem in the name above all names, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. We pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. And I'm back with another video because uh, God put it on my heart to make another video. Uh, got a double header for today. And I was listening to Jonathan Kahn and his uh, latest message on that he gave on December 25th uh, that was uploaded. And the message was... Uh, very powerful. I put the link to that message if you haven't already heard it. And uh, Jonathan Kahn, he he goes in detail of how uh, the God's little G that Israel turned to, um, starting with Baal and then Ashtaroth and then Molech, uh, America has also followed that same pattern of turning to Baal and then to Ashtaroth and finally to Molech. And uh, Jonathan Kahn goes to, on in his sermon to show the parallels. And then uh, he switches again to the paradigm. And if you're not familiar with the paradigm, it's one of his books that he wrote, uh, I think like in 2018. And in that book, he describes how uh, the ancient kings of Israel are resurfacing in relation to uh, the leaders in America. And the reason why I have this scene up here of Donald Trump in Home Alone 2 with Macaulay Culkin uh, was because uh, this has gotten into the news uh, the last couple of days because um, the scene that was in Home Alone 2 was deleted by the Cam Canadian Broadcasting Company as they aired Home Alone 2 during the Christmas season. And so it made a, a big stir. Um, and even President Donald Trump sent out a couple of tweets about it. And so I'm going to play a couple of clips about this because I don't believe that there's any coincidences. Uh, when stuff happens on on the national scale and it comes to light, it's for a very definite purpose. And I want to just put something on the table that ties in with everything uh, that we've been going over and that is occurring in the world. Uh, because... I personally, I've done a couple teachings on Jehu before, on the type and shadow of Jehu, uh, because uh, when I first did my first teaching on, on Jehu, it was on June 4th, 2018, and in this teaching, it's a, it's a whole shadow of the end of the age, and I had no clue about Jonathan Kahn's book at this time, uh, but come to, uh, come a, about a month later, um, I went to a church here in San Diego where Jonathan Kahn was speaking at, and he introduced the paradigm to me for the first time, and he had spoke about everything that I had spoken about previously a month earlier in my uh, in this video. So it was like a it was a confirmation. It was a confirmation that uh, I, I was seeing the same things that he was seeing in the word. Uh, for out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter is established, and so. Uh, this paradigm, this paradigm of Jehu signals that we are at the end of the age because there's just so much in this story of Jehu. And uh, the rapture is in the story of Jehu. After, uh, after he leaves the scene, uh, the rapture takes place with the, with the story of Joash. And it's just so, it's just so deep. And if you, uh, haven't seen this video, uh, or better yet, just read Second Kings chapters nine through twelve and look for yourself, because it's all right there. Everything that we're currently experiencing right now is in the story of Jehu and Joash. Peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Uh, the number seventy, because we know uh, we just passed the seventy-year mark, and in the story of Jehu, uh, Jehu kills the seventy sons of Ahab. Um, people are crying peace and safety, and then Jehu comes and he brings sudden destruction. And then once Jehu passes 
of the scene, there's a rapture event. There's a there's a type of the rapture with the hiding of Joash, the the man child who who was hidden for six years. And in the seventh year of his life, he uh, took the throne um, as uh, as the king over Israel which represents the man-child being hidden during the seven-year tribulation. And at the end, uh, we come to rule on the throne of David with King Jesus as the head. Uh, Jesus Christ is the head. We're the body, and we're going to rule with him. And so all of that goes in hand in hand with the story of Jehu and Johash. And it keeps on coming up because it came up again with uh, the story of Jonathan Kahn that he had uh, preached the other day. And I want to play this clip. It's about uh, eight minutes long. So um, please watch it so I, I can dovetail what I want to show you uh, according to the scriptures and put it out on the table because it's interesting with everything that's been going on with the last couple days and this Home Alone thing with Donald Trump, uh, where it made the national news with Home Alone 2 and he was deleted from uh, this he, he his seven second scene was deleted and it ties into where Home Alone 2 was filmed at. It was filmed in New York, lost in New York. That's where Macaulay Culkin was lost at. And that's where Donald Trump appeared for seven seconds. And so uh, look at this uh, clip from Jonathan Kahn and then I'll get back to the teaching. These three, the dark trinity, Baal Toreth and Molech. They work together and they work together into this day in America. For those of you who have read the paradigm you, or those who don't, you know the ancient mystery we are now replaying. That our leaders are following the templates of ancient leaders. Every one of our leaders is following an ancient leader, the, the, the pattern of an ancient leader in the Bible, so much so that it actually determines their very time, the exact number of years each of them will have on the national stage, each one. I'm not going through it, it's just a mention. Clinton, Bill Clinton will follow that of Ahab without realizing it. And he will, he will be on the national stage from 1979 to 2001. And that is 22 years of Bill Clinton. It says in the Bible, Ahab reigned for 22 years. Barack Obama follows in one of the heirs of Ahab and that his name is Joram. And Joram, it says, and Barack Obama came on the stage at the Democratic Convention 2004, last to the end of his presidency 2016, comes out to 12 years of Barack Obama. It says in the Bible, Joram reigned for a period of 12 years. And then there was Jezebel, and this is not about the person. We need to pray for the person. She doesn't know what she's doing. But Hillary Clinton, of course, is the wife of Bill Clinton. You didn't know that. And so... And so she follows this, and what, what it was about Jezebel, not about the birth, but the sign, Jezebel, she, champ she, she worshipped female power, she championed the goddess Ashtoreth, and Baal, which ultimately meant the ch sacrifice of children. Hillary Clinton has become the champion of abortion in America. Planned Parenthood voted her the, the, the champion of the century of abortion. Not that she knows it. But so you have all these things happening, and everything follows an exact template. And so Hillary Clinton was on the national stage for 22 years with her husband on her own. She was in power. She was in Washington on her own. Senator for 12 years, for actually for eight years, then Secretary of State 12 years altogether. And then she took two years out of the public life, came back for two years to run for president, comes out to 14 years on her own. 22 years with her husband, 14 years on her own. You look at the Bible, Jezebel was on the stage for 22 years with her husband on her own, 14 years. But those ancients, not about the people, we pray for the people, but the ancient leaders were linked to principalities, gods. The ancient queen, Jezebel, she invited, actually invited the priests of the gods and goddesses to the palace. Well, actually, this actually happened in the Clinton years. They actually invited people who are of the new age called priestesses and to the White House. And, and actually, the first lady had sessions with one of them, one of them who advocated goddess worship. And she, even, this woman even spoke about the land of, of Jezebel in her book and even spoke about the goddess Ashtoreth. And they actually had sessions where they were channeling these things, these spirits. But what happens in the paradigm is that the nation comes to a head, a showdown between the, the, the former first lady 
and a new man who comes on the stage. And this new man, he rises up out of nowhere. In the Bible, he is Jehu. Jehu will be the mystery behind Donald Trump for America. Jehu was, a, was not a politician, he was a fighter. Donald Trump's not a politician and he fights with everybody. <laughs> Jehu did not originally follow God, yet God still used him and raised him up for the purposes of God. So Donald Trump did not follow God, did not live a godly life, yet God can use whomever he pleases to use. And he raises up this Jehu back then in the paradigm to, to rise up to become the next king of Israel and to fight against the house of Ahab. And ultimately in the end, it comes to a head, it comes to a showdown between Jehu and Jezebel. It comes between, in other words, the warrior and the former first lady. It's exactly what happened in America. And though everybody was saying that the, you know, you know, the Democrats are going to trounce Trump, the paradigm said that Jehu will emerge victorious. When Jehu rose to power, he saw the temple of Baal in the capital, where they were offering up children. See, Jehu was originally for Baal. He was on the side of Ahab and Jezebel. Then he turned and he said, no, this is wrong. And he, now he's opposing Baal. So Donald Trump, now who was once for, he is now, he is now for life. Yeah. And so he saw the temple of Baal, Jehu, and he, he destroyed it. Amen. See, when the warrior rises, the temple of Baal comes crashing down. But it turns out, so when Donald Trump actually came to the White House, his first act as president was to undo the policies that were for the killing of children in the past presidential orders. He reversed it. And he's been seeking to it. So you got to pray. But it turns out there's actually is a temple of Baal that has stood for 2,000 years in the Middle East. In the 2,000 years, the modern Jehu, Donald Trump, began his rise in the summer of 2015. He announced his candidacy. Two months later, the 2,000-year-old Temple of Baal comes crashing down to the earth. Now, no person could have orchestrated that. But we war not against flesh and blood. We war against the principalities. The signs have appeared in the land. The harbingers have not stopped coming in the land, nor has the war of the gods. In the last days of the presidential campaign, when the issue of killing unborn children, if you remember, was, was front and center, a sign appears in New York City. I went down there to actually witness this. A sign appears, another harbinger in New York City. It was the actual sign of the god Baal. It was the ancient arch of Baal. They erected it in New York City. The arch through which the worshipers of Baal would go to offer up their children. It appears in New York. And I witnessed that they, they had this great unveiling. They, had, they, they played Middle Eastern music as the kind that would be played when Baal was worshipped. And as those of you who know the Harbingers, when one of these things appears, there's almost always a leader in America who says something about defiance. And so there was the, the deputy mayor of New York was there to celebrate the, the Arch of Baal. And says, we are here doing this as an act of defiance. Here, now, I, as I saw this, I just prayed for America. Because this is the sign of a nation that has once known God but has turned away. The sign of Baal, the sign of a nation that had fallen into sexual immorality. The sign of a nation that has lifted up its children. All there. And I did it, we did, we did, we, I was led to see something. And what we did is we took where the Arch of Baal, where they put it in New York City, and where it stood in the Middle East in relation to the Temple of Baal, and we overlaid and said, okay, so what will this, what is this, what is this now pointing to? Where would the Temple of Baal be if we overlaid it in New York City? It ended up pointing us to the ground known as Ground Zero. Ground Zero, where also one of the nine harbingers is standing, that tower of defiance. New York. It was New York that led the nation in the killing of the unborn and remains the capital of abortion. Just a few months ago, about three months ago, two days before my son was born, New York again led the nation in darkness. It passed the horrific law that legalized the killing of children up to the time of birth. And they celebrated it. So that was just the eight minute clip that I wanted to show you. 
Uh, and I'm going to leave the link in here because this whole message is, is awesome. And so I pray that you would watch it. Uh, Jonathan Kahn, he's a mighty man of God. And it's always amazing how this, this paradigm of Jehu keeps on coming up. And so as you heard Jonathan Kahn say, he said that uh, all of America's leaders have been following uh, a paradigm of the leaders of ancient Israel, all the way down to the number of years uh, that they were on the scene. And so this is interesting, which ties into this Home Alone thing with Donald Trump that had just come up on the news recently. Uh, let me just play a minute of this clip and so, you, so we can get everything on the table because I want to point something out that's interesting. <laughs> the 1992 hit Home Alone 2, a Christmas classic that has somehow become a scandal. If you tuned out for a couple of days, I swear this is not The Onion, this is real life. Viewers watching that film on Canadian television this holiday season missed that cameo as the seven-second scene is part of eight minutes that were trimmed from the movie by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation to allow for commercial time. This happens all the time when they rebroadcast movies on TV. While the CBC says the edits were made in 2014 when it acquired the broadcast rights for the film. The move has recently sparked outrage, fake outrage, among the president's supporters who view the omission as politically motivated. Trump yesterday, yesterday jokingly responded to the CBC for editing out his cameo, blaming Canadian President Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Trump tweeted, I guess Justin T doesn't like my making him pay up on NATO or trade. In a second tweet, the president wrote, the movie will never be the same. Just kidding. So you see that uh, this editing of the movie Home Alone 2, uh, Lost in New York, uh, made headlines uh, on uh, global news networks. And so I said all that and put that on the table to hammer home this point of what Jonathan Kahn was talking about, how every leader in America is following the paradigm of an ancient king in Israel. And so the paradigm for Donald Trump is Jehu. And so Jehu, he reigned for, let's read it. Let's read the, let's read for how long Jehu reigned. Um, uh, verse uh, 34, second Kings chapter 10. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu and all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoiahaz his son reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 28 years. Okay, so you heard Jonathan Kahn break down Obama, Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and how they all mirrored uh, ancient kings in Israel down to the exact number of years that they reigned and were on the scene. And so we see that Jehu, who is who Donald Trump is modeling the paradigm, he was on the scene for 28 years. And so I just found it interesting that this Home Alone 2 called Lost in New York, where's Donald Trump? You know, that's why he was in the movie. That's why he made a cameo, because Donald Trump is always linked to New York. He's always uh, that's where, you know, uh, that's where he made a name for himself at was in New York City. And so and remember, Jonathan Kahn also ended. I stopped the clips when he was talking about how New York is leading the world in um, abortion and all types of wickedness. New York is the fountainhead for all the wickedness that has spewed out into this whole world. Uh, it's one of one. It's it's the main hub. Okay, L.A., New York. It's connected. Okay, L.A. is the entertainment, uh, and uh, New York is the financial, um, and it's all connected to uh, one power center, which is America. And Donald Trump is the leader of America, and so. I found it interesting that this movie Home Alone 2, it came out in 1992, okay? And it was the second highest uh, grossing film of 1992. It made $359 million worldwide against a budget of only $28 million. And so this was uh, a worldwide blockbuster, Home Alone 2. And so Donald Trump made an appearance in this movie, Lost in New York. And so in 1992, what is 28 years from 1992? Well, 
28 plus 1992 is what? What's what's 28 going by the paradigm of Jehu, which Donald Trump is is modeling? What's what's 28 years plus 1992? Where do we end up at? 1992 plus 28. 2020. Now I'm just putting it out there on the table. This wasn't the first film that Donald Trump was in. Uh, the first film that Donald Trump made an appearance in was Ghost Can't Do It, uh, made in 1989. And this was uh, a, a movie release that was voted the worst picture <laughs> in 1990. It won the Golden Raspberry Award for worst picture. Uh, and so this was a, this was a dud. So this wasn't no worldwide blockbuster. Uh, but this was the first movie that he was uh, seen in. Uh, but when he really came on the scene worldwide, you know, was in this movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, the second, his second appearance, his second, uh, his second appearance in a, in a movie, which was uh, uh, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. And, you know, uh, it came out in 1992 and all of a sudden it, it made these headlines, you know, because this, the scene that he was in got deleted on the Canadian Broadcasting Channel as they aired this movie. So I just put two and two together. Why Why is all this, you know, why is this making headline news? Well, I don't believe there's any coincidences. Could this be the time, 1992, when uh, Donald Trump has uh, officially made his appearance on the world stage? Of course, he was big in the 80s, you know, because, you know, he had he did boxing events and of course he was big in real estate and uh you know he was he was well known in the 80s as well but you know in 1992 he 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 appeared in a in a worldwide blockbuster film where he got known in other parts of the world that may not have known who he was and uh uh dated from 1992 and we add 28 years to 1992 it brings us to 2020 next year where you know, all of us are looking at because there's a lot of things going going down in 2020. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a laundry list of items that are on the that are on the on the deck. And so I just put that out on the table because uh, Donald Trump is following the model of Jehu, and Jehu ran. Uh, he he was on the scene for 28 years. So how long do we date? What's the date that we date Donald Trump's? you know, appearance on the world stage, you know, if he's going to model this exact paradigm as all the others have, Obama and the Clintons, uh, you know, uh, because this paradigm is deep. Uh, and uh, I just put that on the table because it just all came to my mind when I watched this video today. That's why I had to make this little short clip to put it out on the table, you know, uh, uh, that 2020 is looking promising. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things on uh, coming down the pipeline in 2020. And so uh, just another nugget of information that you could tuck away uh, so that uh, we could continue to watch and pray and always be ready. Uh, because we know that the end is coming sooner than we all believe. And uh, I just found this as an interesting connection. So do with it as you may. You know, I'm not being dogmatic about this. You know, I just found it interesting because of uh, how it all came to light um, on the world stage with this deletion of the clip that Donald Trump was in in this movie that was released in 1992. 28 years from 1992 brings us to 2020. That's how long Jehu reigned. And then after Jehu, we go to second kings chapter 11 and then we get the rapture this is the rapture second kings chapter 11 joash the boy king the man child is hidden from adaliah who is a type of the antichrist let me just read this right quick so you can see the rapture and when adaliah the mother of ahaziah saw that her son was dead she arose and destroyed all the seed royal but jehoshabah the daughter of king joram sister of ahaz Azahiah took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber of Adaliah, 
so that he was not slain. And he was with her in the house of the Lord six years. And Adaliah did reign over the land. And in the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds. And this is when jo, uh, uh, Joash comes on the scene in the seventh year. So uh, this is a shadow of the rapture. Uh, Joash is hidden from the wrath of Adaliah as she kills everyone else because Adaliah is a type of the Antichrist. And so Adaliah kills everyone except Joash. She can't get to Joash. And Joash represents the man child who's going to be hidden in the chambers. Okay, we're going to go into the father's house away from the dragon. The dragon is going to try to stand before the woman when she gives birth, but uh, the man child, we're caught up to the father's house and we enter into the father's house and we shut the doors behind us and we're hidden for that little moment of indignation as it passes over the earth. And so when the man child is seen again, the man child is seen in the seventh year. The seven after the seven year tribulation, that's when the man child appears with the with the head, uh, King Jesus, uh, the body is united. The marriage has been consummated. And then we come down and we reign with the king. Hallelujah. And Adaliah is put to death. The Antichrist is put to death. Hallelujah. And then uh, uh, the worship of God is restored. And so this is a beautiful picture, a beautiful picture. This whole story is just so amazing. Second Kings chapters 9 through 12 is just so amazing. Uh, and uh, I just put that on the table. Uh, you know, I'm not saying this is the dogma right here of this 1992 adding 28 years, you know, to that brings us to 2020. I'm not saying that's dogmatic, you know, that that's the absolute paradigm of uh, Jehu, but I just put it on the table to uh, to get the wheels turning in, in people's minds that are listening to this uh, this teaching, uh, because President Trump, you know, he is the paradigm of Jehu without a doubt. And so after Jehu, when he leaves the scene, the Antichrist comes. OK, the Antichrist comes on the scene and the rapture happens as well. Hallelujah. And so either way you slice the pie, this is it. It's the end. We're at the doors. I love you and God bless you. I pray this teaching was edifying. I'll talk to you soon. Please keep me in your prayers. Amen.